and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, September the 5th. And we have, oop, I'm on the wrong side. We have a special guest right here. She's not staying long, but Alyssa, tell everybody hello. Can you say hello? Okay. Okay. Hello. Say hello. Hello. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah, so. Are, um, oh, hold on just a second. We're having trouble with the video already. Hold on just a second. I just really um, Whoops. Hold on, let me see. Hello, oh. Dolly. Yep, it's good to see you all. So we are camping tonight instead of on Saturday night. Oh, and Carol says hello. Carol Lou says hello. Carol Lou has a granddaughter named Peanut too. Hello, Linda from Rock Island, Illinois. It's good to see you. Alyssa, tell everybody hello because it's about your time to go across the street. But anyway, we're camping on a different night tonight. Um, we are taking Alyssa somewhere tomorrow. I don't know where because we're um, we're not working tomorrow. So we decided to yeah. camp tonight instead. And hello, Sandra from Demon's Ferry. Oh, and there goes John. John, say hello. You might as well say hello to everybody. They can see you. Hello. Yep, and hello, Marianne from Pennsylvania. Hello, Kathy. Right, it's good to see you. Or I'm sorry, hello, Kelly. Hello, Trish. Okay, so Alyssa's getting ready to head out of here. Hello, Deborah. Alyssa, say bye, everybody. Say, I'll see you later. Right, I can on. see you later. <laughs> That's kind of scary. I can see you later. Hello, Barbara. It's good to see you. Hello, Cynthia. Is everybody getting ready? Oh, hello, Kathy. Kathy, Aly or Alyssa, Kathy says hello. Hello. Can you say hello, Kathy? Kathy. Can you say hello, Kathy? Hello, Kathy. Hello, Evie. It's good to see you. Hello, Marlene. Hello, Deborah. Again. Oh, okay. On, okay, baby. tell everybody bye. Bye. Say, I'll see you later. Hello, Myrna. Hello, Tag from Buffalo, New York. Yep, and I'm so sad that um, Orlando Debbie did not make it on here before uh, before Alyssa. Oh, and there, oh, Alyssa, Debbie says hi. What? Orlando Debbie said hello. What? Okay, she said she would see you later. Hello, Roberta. Yep, hello, Betty. Hello, Joyce. It is good to see you all. So, I guess you can tell that we are camping tonight, and no, sadly, we are not at Disney with Debbie like we normally are. Um, and hello, Sandra. This is, so, this is an unusual night for us to camp. Normally, we camp with Alyssa on Saturday nights. Um, and hello, Barbara. Yep, and hello, Roberta again. Um, normally, we camp with them on Saturday nights, but since we have, since we're off from week, from work tomorrow, somehow, because John decided that we were going to be closed. Um, oh my gosh, we're going to go back to Kelly's news in here in just a second. Hello, Sandra. Um, and let's see, oh, and hello, Cynthia. Hello, Lynn. But um, anyway, since we're off from work tomorrow, I'm so excited about Kelly's news that I'm having trouble focusing. Anyway, hello, Rosie. And um, so we are camping tonight so that we can take Alyssa somewhere tomorrow. So we are like, we're in her backyard. But anyway, so not nearly as exciting as camping at Disney and having Debbie, Orlando Debbie come to see us, but you know, we'll take it. Okay, so other Kelly, it was her first week on and I wanna make sure that I've got the color correct. So hold on just a second. Okay, it was other Kelly's first week on, first full week switching to green and she lost four pounds. So, okay, hello Elaine and hello, oh, young Barbara says hello to Alyssa. So tell us Kelly, so what, how did green make a difference? How did that make a, how did that make a difference for you? So what did, what did switching to green and your first full week on green, what did that do to help you lose um, four pounds? Because people are gonna ask. So people that are not here on the live chat, they're gonna be, they're gonna be listening to this and they're gonna go, wait, four pounds, wait, who, what, 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 what? So Kelly, Kelly, what did being on green for that first full week, what did that do? What was different? So what would you say was different that, um, that lets you lose four pounds in a week? And that is awesome, by the way, way to go. Um, but hello everyone, this is not our normal spot. Um, I am Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, September the 5th. If you are watching this with us live, this is not our normal spot. Yeah, we are in Alyssa's backyard and we are camping with her tonight. Um, normally we are at my work, um, but this is a nice little change. Other than the fact that, other than the fact that I forgot to bring the light ring with me, so here in about 30 minutes, y'all are gonna be watching me in the dark. Um, okay, so Kelly said that switching to green made her more accountable when she was eating her food. So I think that is a perfect, I think that's a perfect, um, you know, way to put that. So being more accountable with our food, that's really what it's about. I mean, that's that's really what it's about. Tracking, being accountable. Hello, Sandy from Sandra from Naperville. And Sandra has gone from, I'm gonna sidetrack for a second. So Sandra had some 
pretty major surgery about a week ago and she has gone from um, from her walker to a cane and she is doing some walking without um, assistance. So that is awesome. We are so happy that you are healing well and that you are feeling well. Anyway, this is not our normal spot. If you were watching this on YouTube, it's just youtube.com search if you have an egg. Again, not our normal spot, and I'm gonna go ahead and pre-apologize for when it gets dark here in about 30 minutes. Aloha, Kathy. Um, we have, I guess, officially passed that summer peak where it is lighter, longer, because it is, let's see, it is seven after eight, and it is already getting a little bit dark. Okay, so again, this is September the 5th. So a couple of things, a little bit of news. Hello, Sherry, a little bit of news. Oh, and by the way, if you're brand new, please let us know that you are brand new because we would love to welcome you and say hello. Um, but a uh, little bit of news um, for WW this month. This is September, so we have switched topics. We'll talk about that here in a second. But I didn't know if you all had seen that WW has um, teamed up with Daily Burn. Daily Burn is something that I tried to do during COVID, um, but it was kind of expensive. So um, just to get you know to get started and to try. So WW has teamed up, teamed up with Daily Burn, and you can stream up to 700 different types of workouts, and they start at just 15 minutes, just a 15 minute workout. Um, and you even will win fit points if you sign up through your, oh wait, and Karen is new. So hello, Karen. It's nice to meet you, everybody. Welcome, Karen. She is new here. And Karen, we are not normally in a camping spot when we're talking, and we're not normally going to get dark here, in, you know, at the first 30 minutes. But anyway, so if you're using Daily Burn through WW, you also automatically earn fit points when you track. And you can join for two months free. Um, so that first two months is free, so you can try it. So I never got into it because I wanted to try it and it wasn't free at the time, but now I think I'm gonna look into it. So you can get that first two months free, just go through your WW app. And when Jessica gets the notes posted um, later this year, I guess it'll be, cause I'm way off. Like I'm so far off on my day since we are spending the night with Alyssa tonight instead of on Saturday night. So I keep thinking it's Saturday, but when, when um, Jessica gets the notes, the chat notes posted, there will be a link to how you can get to the, um, to the two free months on through your WW app. Um, and also, I don't know if you knew this or not, but there is a filter feature that is already built into your app. And I'm so embarrassed to say that I have never, I've never noticed that before. And it took Gwen to show me that it was there. So Gwen um, is my fearless leader, but she is also technologically challenged. So I am embarrassed to say that Gwen is the one who had to show it to me. So all you have to do is go to your WW app um, and you, and, and Karen, where are you from? We are excited to, to welcome you. And we also want to know where you're from. Um, but you just go to your WW app and, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit smoky in here too. John started a fire. So, and of course, you know, smoke follows beauty. So it is coming this way. Um, but you just go to your app, go to the my day section, and then um, go to, just go to the toolbar where you would explore foods and recipes and then um, type in something. So like today I was just practicing and I typed in Applebee's. So in that search bar, I typed in Applebee's. And then as soon as you go to search for something, it doesn't matter if it's a food, a recipe, um, a restaurant, whatever, you know, whatever it is, then um, next to the header in the food item, a little blue filter option pops up and it's got an arrow going up down, or it's like a little, it's kind of like, I guess it's like on an old um, stereo or whatever where you would, um, I knew it. Yep, she's from the UK. When she said cheers, everyone, I knew that Karen was from the UK. So Karen, what time is it there? We're just curious. So you're not our first person from the UK, but that is so exciting. And welcome, welcome. Yeah, and you were up late tonight. Yep, North Wales. From North Wales, oh, how funny. So her autocorrect, yeah, North Wales. That is so awesome. We are so glad you were here. Um, but anyway, so that little sort thing, so it almost looks like the tuner on an old stereo where you would push the buttons up, you know, up and down to try and tune everything in. And that's exactly what it's for, is to tune everything in. So then you, when you touch the filter, you can choose, um, you can choose by smart points. You can choose, well here, I'll just show you real quick. So everybody quit saying hi, because I'm not gonna be able to see you. So let's just go real quick to WW. So we're gonna go to our WW app and I'm gonna show you this really quickly, just because this is so cool. This is so, and I'm no Karen, it's 1.19 a.m. Oh my gosh, stay awake. We're not gonna sing Sleepy by songs to you. Okay, so up here, where you search. I'm just going to do Applebee's again. So I typed in Applebee's and then if you notice, I don't know if you can see this or not since it's getting kind of dark outside, but the three, the three little blue lines that came up right here, it says filter. And when you touch the blue, 
you can search by smart points or you can sort by smart points and you can go low to high or high to low of food type, ingredients, restaurant foods, recipes, how many smart points. So if you were gonna go to Applebee's, you could say, okay, I only have eight points left for the day and you could scroll down to eight then you can do dietary preferences and they have vegetarian gluten free and lactose free and then when you hit apply the filter the only things that are going to come up are things that are within the filter that you just put on so and then when you get done when you get done with that filter i mean you just hit clear in the upper right hand corner and you're good to go. So how awesome is that? But that was exciting news um, that Gwen shared with us and I wanted to share it with you, um, but I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. Okay, we're getting ready to talk about this month's theme. So this month's theme is obstacle breakthrough. So we're gonna be talking about breaking through obstacles all month this month. But what I wanna know first is, who attended an in-person workshop last, last week? I know a couple more opened up around the US. So give me a thumbs up if you attended an in-person workshop last week or if you attended a Zoom workshop, give me a thumbs up. And for all of you new people down here at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and do one because I did. So down at the bottom of your, if you're watching this on a phone, if you are watching this on a tablet, you should be able to go to find the thumbs up emoji or the heart. So the thumbs up is for attending an in-person workshop. Oh, and Linda had her bottom in a green chair again. Ours is in a white chair again. So thumbs ups are for in-person workshops or um, for attending a Zoom meeting or both. Hearts, give me some hearts. If you attend, if you watched here with us last week, if you were here with us last week live, or if you watched on demand, you can do both. And I'm seeing lots of thumbs ups and hearts and thumbs ups and hearts. Looks like Elaine, Cynthia, Betty Ann, Myrna. Looks like a, a lot of y'all, Sandra, Kathy. Looks like a lot of you all were attending last week. So that is super awesome. Um, do you know how special it is that you attended last week, the week before US Labor Day? So. Labor Day is one of those holidays where people tend to get, you know, carried away. It's usually a three day weekend for people. Um, so, and sometimes we can get out of control. So congratulations to everyone who went to a, an in-person workshop, a Zoom meeting, um, attended this with us here live last week or watched it on demand. I'm really seriously, I'm so proud of you all. So here are your, um, your virtual Bravo stickers. Way to go, everybody. We're so proud of you. Um, and last week was the last was the last of the September topic. So for the September topic, um, do y'all remember what we were talking about? Because this month we've switched, we've switched to obstacle breakthroughs. So for the entire month of September, we're gonna be talking about obstacle breakthroughs. And so what obstacle breakthroughs is gonna do is to help, um, it's gonna help us to find a way to recognize our obstacles. Like sometimes we don't even realize when stuff's standing in our way, we don't even realize it. So it's gonna help us you know, breaking through those obstacles, it's gonna help us to recognize the obstacles, to be able to see it, you know, when it's sitting right there in front of you, um, to be able to face them. You know, sometimes we don't wanna face our obstacles, but we're gonna learn how to do that this month and how to crush them. So we're gonna crush those obstacles. Um, last week though was chat number 238 and it was more confidence at the scale. So all of August, we were talking about confidence builders. This month, we're gonna be talking about breaking through those obstacles. So, yep, and uh, Tag's exactly right. We're talking about confidence. Um, so last week, um, for more confidence at the scale, we realized that many of us have similar or the same rituals that we go through. So some people would say that they're good luck charms. Some people would say that they're rituals. Some people would say, it's just what I do before I weigh in. Um, but, you know, in an attempt to alleviate some of that anxiety before we step on the scale, a lot of us have, have developed pre-weigh-in rituals. And some of those were things like wearing the same clothes, um, same or similar clothes, going potty before we weigh in, lucky weigh-in shoes. That was Gwen. She has her lucky weigh-in shoes and she keeps them in her car and has them with her whenever and wherever she goes. And she even used those during COVID when she was weighing at home. She still used her lucky weigh-in shoes. Um, same time, same day, you know, same day, same time, same place. Um, I, you know, waited and waited and waited until it was time to go back to our WW in-person workshop before I started weighing, you know, really actively um, and consciously weighing again. Um, and then some people always pick the same scale. That was me, not anymore, but pre-COVID, I would go in and I would always go right. It didn't matter who was at that scale. It didn't matter, it didn't matter that that, probably wasn't the same scale every time because they just put them in a closet when they were done. They were both calibrated. They should have been exactly the same, but I used to always go right. Okay, so even though the scale is just an inanimate object, it can't tell you how you did, you know, what your week was like. A lot of us, you know, have these rituals that we go through because we want to impress the scale so badly. So again, a time and a place. Um, we were talking about um, finding a time and a place to weigh in, if it's at home, if it's at a workshop, if it's at the gym. Um, 
pep talking yourself before you go to the scale. You know, you know what's coming, you know, it's weigh-in day, you know, talking yourself into, you know, this is going to be, you know, great. I had a great week or, you know, I'm just going to take what I get because I didn't have such a great week, didn't track this week. Um, and then having a post game plan, you know, so what you were going to do after you weighed in. So your homework for last week was hashtag scale confidence. And you were going to tell us when and where you would weigh in. Um, and what your post game plan was. Um, and then you were gonna, you know, tag me and everything. So let's see how you did. Sylvia used to always weigh in on Tuesday mornings, but that workshop was canceled. Um, and now, so now she weighs in, I'm sorry, she used to always weigh in on, I think I got this backwards. She used to always weigh in on Mondays and that, that meeting was canceled. And so now she always weighs in on Tuesdays. She weighs in before she's had any coffee or food. She wears the same, um, she wears the same kind of clothes. She weighs in um, sock feet. And after her, after she weigh, after her weigh in, she stops for a large skinny latte. That sounds like a lot of fun. And so no matter what, she already knows that her post weigh in plan is she's going to stop from it, you know, stop for a, um, a, a large skinny latte. Oh my goodness. Okay. And now here's Janet from, from Northumberland, England. Oh my goodness. Somebody else from England. So are you all not sleeping in England? Are y'all so excited about U.S. Labor Day that you're going to stay up all night? So everybody welcome Janet. She is also here from England. Well, she's here from England, from Northumberland. And I would love to be able to say that with a cool British accent, but you're just going to have to take the Southern accent. I hope Northumberland sounds, you know, sounds correct. Um, but then Lynn, also has always weighed in on Tuesdays. Um, and she continued that when she was at home, you know, during COVID. Her routine is to get out of bed, potty. She said, take care of her, take care of business, um, but potty. Um, and then let's see. And then she step, goes ahead and steps on the scales. After that, she uh, goes ahead and gets dressed, eats her breakfast and starts her day. Her Tuesday meals are usually more points after her weigh-in, more points than they would be on her, for her Monday meals. But she, but she reminds herself and she reminds all of us. Yeah, thank you, Janet. She reminds us and she, remind, she reminds herself and all of us that the scale is just a measure and it doesn't dictate her day. So whatever she weighs, that is not gonna dictate the rest of her day. Okay, my pre-weigh-in, ritual has changed. We just talked about that. It's changed since um, since we were back after the COVID closure. Um, I used to obsess about which scale. Hello, Susie. I used to obsess about, oh my goodness. Hello, Leslie from Edmonton. Um, but I used to obsess about which scale. So again, I would always go right, no matter what. Um, and I used to, um, you know, and now I'm just happy to be there. I mean, now I'm literally just happy to be there. Plus they are, um, so they are, that's funny. Okay, the, the, the UK girls are talking to each other. But anyway, so I, I used to obsess about it, but now the way they've got them set up and I'm quite confident that this is just for good social distancing and not because of me, because I used to obsess over the scale. But now one scale is over here when you walk in and then one scale is back here. So it doesn't really matter to me now which one, but I am in the wear the same outfit club I try to wear the same shoes and it's really, really, really hard when we switch to winter shoes because I am not somebody that is going to wear socks with flip flops. I'm just, it's just not going to happen. Um, but I've seen some girls weigh in that way, <clears throat> but I try to wear the same, same or similar clothes, same or similar shoes. I always go potty right before weigh in. Always, always. Even if I just went before I left work. Um, and John and I, but something that's different though, because we were talking about this post plan, this post weigh in plan. Now, John and I have started pre planning what we're going to have after weigh in on Tuesday nights. And I'm telling you, it has made a huge difference. So one week we planned nachos another like last week we planned um, pizza. And it's been weird since we've planned since we've been planning what we're going to have after weigh in. Um, and we'll like and Karen and our friend, uh, my accountability buddy Karen and our friend Barbara, we planned a dinner at, um, at a local restaurant called Aubrey's after one weigh-in. But since I've been planning what I'm gonna have, I've been satisfied, I've been happy, and I've not been going crazy. And hello, Rita, but I've not been going crazy. It's the weirdest thing. So just the, just the pre-planning of it, I haven't lost my mind and just gone absolutely crazy and I've not been eating until I get sick. So that is awesome. So bravo to everyone who did their homework this week. You all are awesome again and again, doing doing your homework on the lead up to a holiday weekend. Y'all are awesome. You are amazing. Okay. So this week, because I know we've got limited time before Alyssa is going to come back. This week's topic um, is overcoming obstacles. And we were talking, we're talking about music. So this last, um, so we are always, so for you girls that are new, we are always the week behind. So whatever the topic was 
all of last week, then we pick it up tonight so that you have a whole nother week to recap, to um, listen to it again in case you missed all of last week. Um, but the new topic, you know, always starts on Sunday. And so we are doing a recap of the previous week. So last week we were talking about, or last week WW was talking about um, overcoming obstacles and um, talking about doing it with music. So what's your guilty pleasure song? I wanna know what your guilty pleasure song is. What's that one song that no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, when it comes on, you stop what you're doing. Oh, and thank you, Janet. Um, but no matter what you're doing, you have to stop and either sing it, tap your feet, clap to it, you know, whatever. You know, you're, you're moving a little different, you know, whatever. So what is your, what is your, what is your favorite guilty pleasure song? And it doesn't have to be a bad song, just a favorite guilty pleasure. So I'm going to give you all just a couple of seconds to answer that. And it's funny, since the, since the, the sky is dark now, John's got a fire going on the other side of the video camera, but since the sky is dark and since I have the camper behind me, this, this looks photoshopped. Does this not look photoshopped like I'm not even, like I'm not really sitting in front of the camper. It looks like I'm sitting in front of a green screen. But anyway, I'm not, I'm sitting in front of the camper. Okay, so Carol Lou's is girls just wanna have fun. Girls just wanna have fun. And I'm not a singer. Um, ooh, Myrna says my way. Is that the, I want it my way. Oh, Linda says the lion sleeps tonight. I love that one. Ooh, Kim says can't stop the feeling by Justin Timberlake. Now that's some guilty pleasure, girl. Woo! Katie says right now it's I'm drunk and I don't want to go home. Okay, I don't know that one. Don't know that one. Janet says anything from Greece. Ooh, Sandra says if he cheats. And Madeline says I I feel good. Da 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 da. da. So look, quickly, let me tell you a story from last night, real quick. So last night. I was taking Dusty on a very long walk. So John and I live in downtown Knoxville and we have not been out and about much, you know, during COVID. Ooh, I'm sorry, Marianne says Kung Fu fighting. That gets me excited. Um, so we've not been out and about, a, you know, a lot downtown just, you know, due to COVID. So um, I took Dusty all the way down through Market Square. And if you've ever been to Knoxville, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but we went down through Market Square, made a big loop through Market Square, and then we came down the main drag. So we've got a um, the main drag there in Knoxville. That's where all everything's happening. You know, just kidding. Um, but at downtown, so we're walking down. So we were we're walking down. It's just called Gay Street. So we're walking down Gay Street, and you hear all of a sudden you hear just loud. I mean, super, super, super loud. Literally blaring from somewhere music from some from somewhere down the street. I mean, it is blaring. Um, and people, you know, people were turning their heads and starting to frown and everything. And, you know, people were starting to scowl. And then all of a sudden, a huge guy, I mean, this guy was huge, huge guy on an even more huge Harley Davidson, um, covered in tattoos, had on a t-shirt that said, I hate people, comes rolling down the street. Okay, so, you know, he looks mean, he looks angry, he looks whatever. But for the next block, I looked around and I could see heads bobbing, I could see toes tapping. Um, I couldn't help but start singing um, as he went along. So the image was, you know, I'm a rough and grumpy tough guy. So that was the image that he was giving off. But all of a sudden you could hear Stephen Perry singing, don't stop believing, hold on to that feeling. I told you I'm not a singer. Street lights, people. So all of a sudden, everybody's mood was changed. So we were all like frowning and angry when we could just hear music blaring and coming down the street. But I'm serious, something about, something about, I don't know, just the toughness of this guy on this big Harley. I mean, he just looked, he just looked angry, but Stephen Perry, I mean, Journey was like flowing, you know, it was just like flowing out, you know, of the speakers and it made everybody happy. It completely changed the mood. So music does just that. Um, whether it's soft jazz, call, you know, calming you down after a, you know after a hard day, um, if it's um, you know kind of calming your soul down, you know, if it's hip hop, getting your groove on, um, if it's music, if music can boost your mood, it can um, remind you of fond memories. It can um, it can even make you exercise farther and longer. I know I extra, I know I walk faster and longer if I'm listening to music. So how can you add music to your weight loss routine? Um, make a playlist. So make a playlist of your favorite songs, whether they it is for relaxing, whether it is for exercising, mood lifting, worshiping, whatever you want it to be. I don't just have one playlist on my um, 
Okay, see, Betty, uh, Betty Ann uses music to sleep. So I don't just have one playlist on my phone. I have one for exercise, it's just called workout. I have one for worshiping and it's called, guess what? <gasps> Worship, you know, so you can have different kinds of playlists and um, you can find a service that works best for you like um, Spotify, iTunes, um, you could use a real CD player or oh, you could make a mixtape if you still had the abilities to make. Remember those cassette? Remember those, we used to all make cassette tapes that were mixtapes. You could make a mixtape. You could totally do that. Um, um, or you can use Amazon Music. You know, there are a ton of different ways to, you know, to make a list, um, to make a playlist for yourself. And then you can decide when and where you're going to listen to that playlist. So things like walking. Um, and did you know that you can actually look for music that has a certain BPM or beats per minute um, and that those beats per minute it equal how yeah, Pandora that's another good one Kelly Pandora um, but the BPM is so if you pick songs that have a certain BPM that's gonna make you walk a certain pace and you can actually search for songs that have a certain uh, you know BPM um, cleaning I hate cleaning I absolutely hate cleaning I can't stand it I can't stand cleaning um, but if I put in some music, if I pop in my headphones, you know, and I'm singing, I'm sure all my neighbors are loving it, but um, I'll, I'll actually clean. It actually makes the time go faster for relaxing. You know, Betty Ann said that it helps her go to sleep. She's got a playlist for sleeping, um, you know, or even for distracting yourself. You know, sometimes if you're headed for the bag of chips, maybe just pop in some tunes. Okay, so that's your homework for this week. So your homework for this week is hashtag playlist plan so p-l-a-y-l-i-s-t p-l-a-n and yes barbara we are camping in casey's backyard today so hello loretta hello barbara and hello loretta so yes barbara we are camping um Alyssa wasn't home she had an active social life yesterday afternoon so she wasn't home and so we are camping in her backyard tonight instead of on Saturday night okay so that's your homework for this week though is hashtag playlist plan and I want you to make your I want you to make your playlist um, and I want you to name it. So I want you to find a few songs, make a playlist, name it, and then tell us when you will use it. So that's all you have to do for your homework. You, you don't have to tell us what the songs are if you don't want to, but just find a few songs, make a playlist, tell us the name of your playlist and when you're going to use it. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you know the drill after this. So if you're not new, you know that you're going to tag me on Instagram. You're going to tag me, um, on Instagram, it's at if you have an egg. If it's on Connect, it's at if you have an egg. If you are here on the in the Facebook public um, on the, the public page, um, it is still at if you have an egg. Or if you're in our closed group, it's at Kelly Green Milligan. And thank you, Alicia, for uh, for listing that the hashtag playlist plan. So do your homework, do your homework, do your homework. Casey has been coming up with some fantastically fun. Uh oh, it is sprinkling. We may be moving inside. Um, hello from Milton Hill Dam, Barbara. Um, but anyway, so we are going to try and make it through this sprinkling. It is sprinkling out here now, um, and I have some expensive video equipment. So we're going to try and make it through the second half of this, though. But that is your homework, and it is hashtag playlist plan. But let's try to get through the second half of this, maybe with just some sprinkling. So the second half, we are going to continue talking about um, our packing for camping. So like we've already, like I've already said, oh, I'm sorry, girls who are new. I did not bring my apron because, yep, and you're exactly right, Sander. I almost forgot to stop and drink my water. Um, so, girls that are new, second half, um, we're gonna we all normally do something fun or we cook. Well, I'm not cooking anything since we are camping, but we are, are gonna get a drink of water. So, everybody, stop and get your water before we start part two. <laughs> and Barbara's saying hi to all the other Barbaras because I think there's three here tonight. Okay, so everybody stop and get your drink of water. Okay, so last week we were talking about WW on the go. This week we are talking about overcoming challenges. We are talking about busting through obstacles. So one of the obstacles that we had to, to bust through this week is what we are going to do tomorrow on Labor Day. So this is U.S. Labor Day is tomorrow. Um, it's a holiday for many. And um, no, and Debbie says you're not using the canner tonight since you were camping. Debbie, ain't nobody got time for that, okay? We only make you suffer through the six hours of trying to get something made in the can cooker. I'm just kidding. Okay, but we are going to continue this WW on the go because we are actually closed tomorrow. So Casey Kitchen Center and the Fab Shop, mine is Casey Kitchen Center. John's portion of our business is called the Fab Shop, and we're hardly ever closed. But we are closed on Labor Day each year. So. Last year, we packed Alyssa up and we took her on a little hiking trip for the day. Um, but we're going to continue our WW on the go or WW, you know, 
let's go on the go, whatever uh, chat from last week, because I want to show you what we pack for things like that. So this is for camping. This is for, this is the way we pack for camping. This is the way we pack for riding down to the campground. So when we do head to, yeah, thanks a lot, Debbie. So when we do head down and it works really well on top of a stove, Debbie, I will say that. So when it's on top of a stove and you can, um, you can uh, adjust the heat or you can make it the heat that you want, it works fantastically. So, okay, Labor Day is a day that traditionally has been filled with hot dogs, hamburgers, potato chips, potato salad, um, if y'all don't know that macaroni salad stuff that you can get at the store, worst points ever. Those are like, that's like the highest points of pretty much anything you could eat on Labor Day. Not even kidding. So what we've done the last couple of years, and we're doing this again tomorrow, on Labor Day, instead of going to a fat fried, you know, even though it's, even if it's grilled, you know, cookout kind of a thing, we are going to take our food with us and we're taking Alyssa with us again this year. So we, um, oh good, Loretta made the fat-free cream cheese from yogurt. She said it was absolutely delicious. That's fantastic. Okay, so if it starts raining too hard, we're gonna have to dash and go right in the camper. I think we're okay for right now because John has us underneath an umbrella, so we will see. Okay, I really wanna be able to stay out here, A, because I wanna be able to stay out here, but B, because everything for the cooler is already out here. Okay, so anyway, we've done this the last couple of years, and um, this is what we are going to do again this year. Um, we're going to take our, um, we're going to take our everything with us. So, I'm sorry, we may have to run into the camper. Hold on just a moment, please, because we have got quite, sorry about the extra noise. We have got quite the little shower going on here. Um, and I do not want any of my electronics to get wet. So, let's see. I think we are okay for right now. Let me scoot everybody over real quick. Give me just a second. And y'all know it would not be a chat with me if we didn't have some kind of, if we didn't have some kind of, you know, I don't know, electrical difficulty, some form of, um, I don't know, just some form of weirdness. Okay, so when we're talking about food on the go. Last week we were talking about eating out. We were talking about, um, uh, we were talking about eating out. We were talking about, um, you know, what to take with you. So here are some of the things that we pack to take with us. So I have the cooler and yeah, Debbie, it is, it's very wet on the porch next to me, but that's okay. Just the right side of my body is wet and everything else so far Everything else so far is in the dry. So we're gonna try and do this. The cooler is getting soaking wet, but that's okay, because it's a cooler. Okay, so um, this is what we would take with us. Again, if we were going camping, this is what we used to take with us when we had, when we would go to volleyball, soccer, um, anything where the kids needed food fast, you know, where we needed to be able to pack food to take with us. Um, this, is, this is exactly what we would do. Um, and wait, so hold on, who's, who is in isolation? I just missed that. I just missed that. Okay, anyway, so these are things that we would pack with us to go to volleyball tournaments, soccer tournaments, um, anywhere where the kids needed to be able to grab food. Um, so yeah, and Myrna says, this is overcoming obstacles, getting practice already. Exactly, yes, we are getting, we are exactly getting, you know, uh, practicing for getting over obstacles. Okay, and Karen, oh my gosh, really? You're in isolation, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Okay, so we always use a, I'm gonna call it a medium sized cooler and I wish I could pick it up and show it to you, but it is sitting in the pouring down rain now. And we're tr I'm trying to keep us and the camera in the dry. But anyway, so we use like a medium sized cooler. You can use, if it's just for you, you can use a small cooler. You can use one that you carry. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. This one happens to have um, wheels on it and a handle so that we can drag it with us again, volleyball, soccer, you know, to things like that. Um, since it's going to be me, John, and Alyssa, we're using, we are using this medium sized cooler. I don't know how big to say it is. Um, I mean, it's a decent size. It's not huge or anything. Um, but it's just a medium sized cooler, but it is one that I can pick up. So that is one thing that I will say I will start with is do not pack a cooler that's bigger than you can pick up by yourself. So you do not know whether or not you're going to have help wherever you're going. So always make sure 
that it's a coot that it's something that you can pick up by yourself um okay so and this cooler is so it is small enough it's big enough to carry all of our stuff that i need for me john and Alyssa, in it but it is all is still small enough that i can pick it up by myself so let me show you what's in here in case it starts pouring because it's it's getting heavier so we're gonna have to hurry on this part of it or move into the camper so how we pack this and I can take some pictures for you all too, but how we pack this, and I'm trying not to get everything in here soaking wet. Give me just a second. Oh. Okay, so how we pack this cooler, first thing, um, we normally make some hard boiled eggs. Well, since Alyssa is not going to eat hard boiled eggs, I didn't make any yet for this one, but if you make hard boiled eggs, if we're gonna eat them that day, then I go ahead, um, then I go ahead and peel them. If we're not gonna eat them that day, I mean, like if we're not gonna eat them immediately, like if we're traveling and, re and we're packing this for traveling um, or, or if we're gonna be on the road for hours and we just need to be able to get them out a few at a time, hard boiled eggs last longer if you don't peel them. So I'll put them in something like this. And this is one of the cute containers that I got from the girls that were at our pop, that have been coming to our pop-up markets at Casey Kitchen Center. Um, but this is just, it's just a plastic container. Um, this is sturdy enough to keep the heart. Now I wouldn't put uncooked eggs in this and then try to travel with them because they're gonna be destroyed before you get to wherever you're going to. Um, but this is a cute way um, to keep hard boiled eggs that have that are still on the shell um to keep them safe and i just keep it closed with a hair thingy so when um oh no and barbara says oh, okay i looked get in the camper the weather map has some coming oh well we'll just try to hurry because i'm not lugging all this into the camper just yet so anyway so use something like this use a hair thingy to keep it closed because you don't want this to fall out while it's in your cooler okay so that's the first thing something like that then last week we talked about this um, this is just our this is our camping snacks bucket this is a um, this was this was just a container for um, uh, laundry pods so John only uses pods he doesn't use liquid detergent so this was a container from the laundry pods and you can see the lid stays on there pretty well but what we do in this one and I'm gonna close that so it doesn't get water in it what we put in this and when Alyssa saw it today when I was getting ready for the chat she was like oh camping snacks because she knows what's going to be in this but we go ahead and fill this with things like um like the emerald packs of nuts that we were talking about last week those are four points um Alyssa loves these these are from Trader Joe's and I can't remember I think these are like two points I don't ever eat them Alyssa eats them all the time we've got an organic mango fruit bar and then I think we have a an apple and mango fruit bar but Alyssa loves those from Trader Joe's we keep those in there here's some more of those emerald nuts here's one of the salted snack or salted peanut snack packs that we got that we had from last week I think these are six smart points so these are six smart points the emerald nuts those are four smart points um John and Alyssa love those um this having something like this that's an in individually wrapped if, even if I eat this and it's six points, I'm gonna stop at six points, okay? I'm not gonna open a second one. These are for Alyssa, but she loves these. She loves yogurt covered raisins and they can come in individual packages. Uh, let's see real quick. Oh, the Cliff Mini Bars. Those are four smart points each. Fruit Leathers, you can also get these at Trader Joe's. I think those are one or two. We always have some kind of crackers, um, the, either the um, cheese crackers or peanut butter crackers. Those are six. Um, six smart points more things from Trader Joe's these are pure layered fruit bars but just keep stuff like this I mean you know you can keep um, quest bars in there you can keep any any of your snacks like that in there so the reason we use this and I don't know if you noticed this or not but I just took it out of the cooler so this is in the cooler with all of our wet stuff but remember this was made for laundry pods so the laundry pods if laundry pods get wet they're done they are absolutely done so this is made now it's not completely watertight like i wouldn't want to submerge it in water but it does absolutely fine in the cooler with all of the wet things because this is made for the pods not to get wet again if they got wet They'd be toast. Okay, so that's the camping snacks, and that's Alyssa's favorite because she loves the camping snacks. Okay, next thing, always takes bring some kind of sturdy fruit like bananas. Um, do go ahead and wash them before you put them in there. Um, I always bring 
some kind of reusable containers. Yeah, and Betty says Maxwell House plastic um, coffee containers. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Um, I always bring um, some kind of a Ziploc bag with Okay, as long as, the, as long as the wind doesn't start coming this way, we will be okay. Um, but some kind of Ziploc bag that's got um, some wipes in it that has some reusable Ziploc bags. Like these are, this one is a reusable snack bag. Um, this one is like a sandwich size. Okay, these are not only good for putting your snacks in, but if you go, go somewhere and you're going to get wet, like if your phone is going to be out, guess what? You can also use this to put your phone in to keep your phone from getting wet. Or if you have something else that you don't want to get wet, it's perfect for that. Okay, so let me put these back in this plastic bag and I may set this over the top of the camera just as an additional precaution so that it does not get wet. And I wish you all, oh, nope, that's too far down. I wish you all could see this because now I have like a little tent set up over the top of the camera and I'm using the snack box to keep the water off of the iPad. Okay. Yeah. Ridiculous how much I want this to, to happen. Okay. Then my next bag and these are just gallon bags and we reuse everything. So we've got Ziploc bags with more Ziploc bags in them. We've got repurposed, um, uh, laundry pod. If you use the laundry pod thing though, please run it through the dishwasher before you actually put food in it. So we repurposed that. This is just another repurposed Ziploc bag. And inside of that, I have a pack of the bumblebee tuna that we talked about last week. We've got a pack. And remember all this is going with us tomorrow. So we've got a pack of the La Banderita, um carb counter tortillas. We have some GIF to go. We talked about these last week too. This is GIF to go. This It's eight points for the whole thing or it's four smart points for half of it. So if we want to make two peanut butter and banana tortillas tomorrow, we can do that. We've got exactly enough to do that. If I want to make a tuna sandwich, I can do that. Um, we've got some of the little kosher um, dill petites in there. I've got some applesauce in case Alyssa wants some applesauce. And instead of throwing away all the little, you know how they at restaurants and fast food and whatever, they always give you like, you know, They'll give you like no spoons, but all knives or whatever. We keep all of those instead of throwing them away and we put them in here. So you've, so you've got that. Yeah. So you have a way to spread the peanut butter. You've got a way to cut the banana if you needed to. Um, and you've got a way to spread the tuna. So that's another great way, great use of a Ziploc bag. And again, since you're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag, it's not gonna get wet. So if you've got ice in your cooler, as the ice starts melting, everything that's in the Ziploc bags and in the, um, and in the um, snack container, the plastic snack container, they're not gonna get wet. Okay, the next thing we do, I freeze little bottles of water. So when we go, so tomorrow we're probably going to go hiking somewhere again. Last, um, last Labor Day, we went to Frozen Head State Park. Probably going to go somewhere like that again this time. Um, Frozen Head or we'll go to like, we've got passes to the zoo. I don't know where we're going to end up going. Um, but I freeze tiny bottles of water, A, because I can put two of these on either side of my backpack and they don't weigh a thousand pounds. Um, we do sometimes go places where they where you can refill your water containers with um, filtered water. So again, this is a great size for that. And these are frozen. So what? Betty Ann said Dusty. Where is Dusty? I don't see him. I think he's inside. Um, but these are, but I freeze these and we I use these as the ice. So these are all of these are frozen. These are these are like ice packs. Um, and then when we're done, we're done and we can recycle the empty bottles. Okay, so I hope the rain is not too loud for you all. But so this cooler is filled with frozen bottles of water. And um, the next thing, repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. And we're probably going to keep this a little bit shorter tonight because it's really starting to rain now. Okay, so I'm going to talk really, really, really fast. So re repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. This was a drink cup from one of those nutrition drink places. And, but they're perfect, they're the perfect size for things like carrots. These are just those colorful carrots that you get at, um, oh yeah, this is not dusty. Alyssa left us this, um, but that's a repurposed drink cup. And um, it has um, carrots in it. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Betty Ann said she thought he was beside me. Oh, this is another repurposed drink cup and it has cheese in it. It's got cubed cheese for Alyssa. Let's see what else we got here before I get drowned. Then I have, this is the repurposed container from, um, we had, um, let's see, snack mix in this. So this is a repurposed container from snack mix and I've got our clementines in there so that we've got some clementines to eat tomorrow. More bottles of frozen water. This one is, a, is repurposed from last Sunday night. We were talking about watermelon. So we were talking about having watermelon in, you know, going ahead and paying a little bit more for watermelon, grapes, things like that, to have them already washed, cut, whatever, so that they're ready to go, especially for volleyball tournaments, soccer tournaments, baseball games, things like that. Hello, Vicki. Um, yeah, so Vicki, well, you're here just in time for all of the, you're here just in time for all of the, for the rain. So we're gonna, we're gonna be talking fast to finish up because it's raining hard now. Okay, this one is a repurposed watermelon. Had, it had watermelon in it and we repurposed it for, for peas. So I'll put some snow peas in that one. And this one has extra crisp cooked bacon in it. So this was a grape cup and I put some extra crisp cooked bacon in it so that we could have that tomorrow. And last but not least, because if I'm gonna drown, I'm gonna get carried away. John asked for this specifically. This was a fluff container and these are perfect. These are perfect, um, the fluff containers, but this has that man's turkey tenderloin in it and it is absolutely fantastic and i can still smell it even though it is soaking wet okay so i am going to cut it short tonight it is a holiday weekend we are going to start packing um, to get ready to go camping with Alyssa tomorrow um, and it is pouring down rain and i am at severe risk of the electronics getting wet so i am going to wrap it up tonight y'all let me know if you have any questions um, I would love to hear from you. Um, I would love to know what you use um, when you do things, when you take WW on the go, how you keep everything together. Um, but yeah, I can feel the rain now under the umbrella. So I'm going to go ahead and say good night. You all be safe. Have a great Labor Day. And for those of you who are up late with us in the UK, have a great evening and we'll talk to you next time. Good night. Mm -hmm.